It is many tens of thousands of years since humans first encountered the savage and warlike race known as Orcs. In all that time, mankind has fought innumerable wars against these barbaric creatures, and there is no likelihood that this situation will ever stop. The orc's green skin is due to the algae that flows through their blood and also forms part of their digestive system. The Goths are the fiercest of all the orcs and the most warlike, which is saying something. They prefer close quarter fighting and have little patience for complex tactics or sophisticated strategy. Hello, welcome to the channel. My name's Ed, and in this video, I'm going to be painting up the 20 orc boys found in the original starter set of Warhammer 40,000. In my first video, I used foam core and a few basic terrain techniques to make the cardstock terrain that came in the box chunkier and more durable for tabletop gaming. I'd also like to say thank you for all the positive feedback and comments I had for this video. If I had wet the ground cover with isopropyl alcohol, it would have broken the surface tension of my PVA solution and made less of a mess. Thank you to SEM and the Lunatic Head for that tip and for your subscription. With the terrain complete, I was really keen to move on to the miniatures and I decided to start with the orcs. This is such an iconic miniature, full of design cues you can still find on GW Orcs today. Before painting, I always like to look over the source material for ideas, and I found in Codex Imperialis this great picture by Mark Gibbons. Like so many of his illustrations, he has captured the grittiness of the setting, and I'd like to try and incorporate this style into my miniatures. Before I did anything else, I cleaned up all of the mould lines and drilled the barrels. After a quick tidy, I remembered that I was missing three orcs. To bring the mob up to full strength, I pulled out a box of Rogue Trader Space Orcs. These guys are really old and predate even the starter set. I suppose you could say that they're the Orc equivalent of the legendary RTB01 Marines. I think these three will fit in well and give a bit of variety to the mass of otherwise monopose minis. I ended up using the arms from a more recent sprue of Orcs and to my surprise, they really suited him. Now, with the mob back at full strength, I based them using small chunks of cork and builder's sand. I also added wire and bits of clutter to a select few for added interest. I wanted to try out my scheme on one miniature first, before batch painting could begin. I primed this model using Halford's Grey and then gave it a blast from above with white primer. Using Mournfang Brown, I painted his trousers and the shaft of his axe then Abaddon Black to paint the shoulder guards, helmet, and flak armour. I mixed a little Abaddon Black in the brown already in my palette, and then painted his shoes and pouches. For his remaining armour, I used Mephiston Red. I painted the skull and bull icon white, then had a go at some checks on his shoulder, which I had to do off camera. Next up, I dry brushed the whole miniature with Tyrant's skull. I then painted the metallic areas with lead belcher and the horns with Rakarth flesh. I then liberally washed the whole miniature with Agrax Earthshade. After drying, the orc is looking suitably drab and grimy. My objective was to try and offset this with a really vibrant, almost luminous skin tone. You guessed it. Goblin Green. Like most of Vallejo's paints, it has great coverage and I applied one thin coat for this step. I then gave the flesh a wash of Bell Tan Green. Time for another coat of Goblin Green, but this time taking care not to hit any of the recesses where the wash is. Mixing in even parts Moot Green to the Goblin Green, I added the first highlight, hitting the raised areas of the flesh. I then repeated this step with just the Moot Green and reduced the area covered to the uppermost parts. 
Nearly there now. I added a small amount of Flash Git's yellow to the moot green and hit the highest parts like his lips, nose, fingers and elbows. If you want, you can go really extreme and do a tiny bit more using a 50-50 mix of yellow and green. Now for the finishing touches. I dry brushed the metal areas with lead belcher and painted the top of the horns and his teeth with Rakarth flesh. I also touched over the red and white to make these colors pop a little more. For the base, I gave it a simple wash of Drakenhof Nightshade, then finished off by painting the rim of the base with several thin coats of Abaddon Black. Considering this is the first orc I've painted in 25 years, give or take, I'm really pleased. I think I've captured something of the grittiness of Gibbons' art and the vibrancy found in the painting style of the era. It's time to face down the rest of the mob. Batch painting can feel like a bit of a chore sometimes, so to combat this I gave myself plenty of time and made sure I painted regularly and often to avoid burnout. A few good podcasts, like The Crown of Command, which focuses on GW gaming of the 90s, and an audiobook of one of my favourite sci-fi novels, Hyperion, made this a stress-free process. By the time I got onto the green skin, I was really excited to see these minis come together. And here they are all together, looking mean and green and ready to put the boot in those umis for Gazgul Magorag Thraka. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a like and subscribe and feel free to comment below. I really enjoy reading and responding to people's comments. Uh, and I'll see you in a few weeks with some Blood Angels. Thanks very much. Bye bye.